The migration phase, let's talk about it. A few hints, and again, this is my colleague Sarah Lynn who helped me prepare this. She's really an expert and she says you shouldn't start with your most important workload. And it's kind of a no-brainer, really. You want to get started with something which is not critical to your business because this is the phase where you're going to learn about the migration, all right? And so when you start, you know, driving a car, you don't go on the highway immediately, right? You start on small roads where nobody can see you and where, most importantly, you cannot hurt anybody especially not yourself. And so here it's exactly that. You don't want to hurt yourself. So start with a small workload. Maybe you have a small internal tool uh, that is uh, well suited to do a migration and you will learn a lot during this migration that you can then apply when you do the actual migration of your most important workload. Communication is key, all right? We don't say it enough. The communication is critical, especially between your IT pro and your developers, because maybe the developers will want, uh, you know, to try new features when they are in the cloud, and then the IT pro need to know about it so that they can prepare themselves. Uh, the, the migration itself is going to affect everyone. So have, you know, team meetings where you go to the point where you talk about it. Maybe even better than team meetings, documents, share documents where you write everything that you do and where people can consult and can modify things all right this is really a good uh, good management id managing monitoring setting up backup disaster recovery those are all things that the cloud is going to offer you uh, in a very easy manner so setting up a backup for example well for a sql server it's uh, pretty much automated so you don't really need to do anything there uh, but maybe you want to set disaster recovery and maybe you want to have a secondary region for example where your data is kept like this if there is a disaster in one region which of course we don't hope but you know things happen then you can always Always go back to the uh, to the backup, which is running in a totally different region, and recover your data. Monitoring is critical, and this is something that we do a lot on Azure. We have a lot of tools for that. I'll talk to you about that in the fifth module of this learning pass. Uh, we have Azure Monitor, managing your application. So this is really what you do during this phase. And then maybe you can reconsider some design choices. Why not? Uh, this is when your application runs well. So maybe you can say, how can I make it run even better? Uh, it is secure by default, but maybe I can make it even more secure. Do I really need to have I don't know, the firewall with those ports open, can I close them? Can I use, I don't know, an express route if I want to have a hybrid connection to my data, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a lot of options. In the optimization phase, now, optimizing your application and optimizing especially the performance at this stage and, and of course, the cost, this is really a, a business as usual activity, or at least it should become one. This is something that you do continuously, all the time. It should be top of mind. How can my, uh, my application run even better? And how can it save me money? And again, we have tools for that, all right? I'll talk to you about that when we talk uh, about migrating the data, for example, in module three of this learning path. We'll talk about optimizing your queries, your SQL queries. We'll talk about getting some recommendations on how to do that. We'll talk about uh, cost management and how to optimize it. And here again, you can get some recommendations on how to do that. Tracking, understanding your cost trends. This is, of course, very important. You want to do that. You want to know where your money is going. You want to know how much you're going to pay at the end. This is exactly where you see some silly things like, oh, no, somebody forgot to turn a virtual machine, which is very expensive. And why don't you go and set up, for example, auto shutdown on those virtual machines? You can say that every evening at 6 p.m., for example, the machine is going to shut down. And like this, you go into the night knowing that you don't have a machine uh, like costing you money for uh, no benefit at all. And this is also, of course, where you can do your uh, operations run even better, where you can optimize the roles, for example. You can, uh, you know, continuously train your, uh, your staff. This is super important. Continuous training is very, very important. The security is also a business as usual activity. And here again, uh, this is something that should be always top of mind. You continuously, as soon as you have, uh, you know, a public port open somewhere, somebody is going to try to attack it. So you want to secure that. You want to make sure that you don't have leaks, that you don't have any problem. And here too, we have tools and we have recommendations for you. So we'll, saw that, uh, we'll see that also um, for example, when we talk about uh, the data migration in module three, also in module four, when we talk about securing the application using uh, TLS certificates, etc., everybody should know their responsibility 
Azure works very much with a role-based access control, and so you can really define that some people have different roles when it comes to Azure, and uh, like this, they will know what they need to do. They can train themselves specifically for that, in addition to the general training, uh, and then they uh, also have a more secure access to, to that. Staff training, of course, I already mentioned that. Keep training your users and your staff all the time. So the Azure Migration Center, this is where we'll, we will get started. It's uh, azure.com slash migrate if you want to have really the shorthand. You, we have guidance, we have tools, we also have partners, and we are going to help you recognize what you need and how you can get better into doing those migrations. So without further ado, I want to show you a demo. And in here, we are going to assess the migration. And we are going to start by assessing the web application migration. But then later, we will also assess the data migration. So here we start in the Azure portal. And of course, very much of what I'm going to do here, you could also do with a script or with a console application, with the Azure command line uh, integration, for example. Let's start by creating a new resource. And we are going to create a resource group. The resource group is where basically where you group everything that you have in your application. Like this, you can manage and find everything. Creating a resource group is like creating any other resource in Azure. You're going to have to define a few things, like the subscription where you want to be built, give it a name, and then you're going to select a region. In that case, I'm going to put things in Western Europe, which is closer to my user. All right, we're going to create that. It's just going to take a few seconds to be created. We go to the resource group, and of course, we see that at the moment it's going to be empty. We still don't have anything into that. So let's go back to the marketplace and we are going to add something called Azure Migrate this time. Now Azure Migrate is a little bit a special type of resource. It's actually what we call a hub. This is where you're going to uh, collect every uh, migration assessment that you're going to do. Like this, you can document it and then you can find it very easily. So here you see the Azure Migrate Hub. You see that you can also migrate multiple things, not just web application and database. For example, servers, all right? If you have a virtual machine that you want to migrate to the cloud, we are going to help you with that. Virtual desktop can get migrated as well. And also Databox, which is kind of a fun way or <laughs> at least an interesting way to move your application to the cloud in a physical manner. For example, if you have a lot of data and you don't want to rely on a slow internet, or if this is very, very sensitive data and you want to move it in a more secure manner without relying on the public internet. So in this session, we talk about the web application. So let's click here. And then as you can see, we have a migrate project already, but I really would like to start with a brand new project. So I'm going to create a new migrate project. And I'm going to uh, create one. Here we go. And in order to create the project, again, same type of dialogue, the subscription, the resource group. Let's give it a name. We are going to call that Rewards Migrate. Rewards being the name of the application that we are going to migrate. And here we don't select a region per se, but we select a geography. Okay, That's going to influence a few things during the migration. Cool, so we create this uh, new project. As you can see, it's quite fast. And now under web application, we have some tools recommendations. For example, the uh, app service migration assistant. And here you see the two phases, the assessment first and then the migration. And uh, here for the web application, we are actually going to use the same tool. So let's go to the website where we can learn more about this tool. As you can see, this is a public-facing website. Now, interestingly, if you have a URL which is public, you can enter it here, and we are going to do a quick assessment for you uh, as a first idea of what's going on. So here, I don't have actually a public, uh, public uh, domain name for the rewards application yet, but I'm going to just type Tailwind Traders, which is our other application, our uh, public-facing web store. And now, funnily enough, it's actually already running on Azure. And so, of course, everything is green because migrating an Azure application to another, uh, to another Azure application is very easy. So there is no questions here that this is going to work. But if you have another website which has a public-facing URL, you can enter it here and have really a quick assessment to see what you're dealing with. So let's go back and download this time the, the tool itself. Notice that you can use it for .NET, but also for PHP application. And now this is a tool installed. It's actually running as, a, as, a, as an application. 
And here you saw IIS, so this is basically uh, the web server on which the application is running. I'm just going to go to localhost to see the application running on my premise, on my own server. This is the application. It's a rewards management application for Tailwind traders. This is what we are going to keep track of your order history, maybe give you some coupons and some uh, advantages, some benefits. You can navigate to another client. This is what you see. It's powered by ASP.NET and SQL Server. So let's go back to the tool and first of all we are going to just quick uh, take a quick look at the application itself. So as you can see this is actually a web forms application. Now web forms is an old technology but it is very very or at least it was very popular. As you can see here it's running on .NET Framework 3.5 an old version of .NET extremely popular and this is why we actually allow you to run those old uh, applications on Azure directly but before we know if we need to change something let's do the assessment so here I selected the, the, the default website and as you can see we have one error now this error would prevent us from actually running uh, this web application to the cloud it's a configuration thing so let's go to IIS and here as you see we have a lot of documentation explaining to you what is going on here and why you need to change it it's because the identity of the application here is running as local system which of course on Azure is not allowed so we are going to have to change that so we go to the application pools let's take the default application pool I'm going to change it to uh, something which is compatible with what Azure is actually offering. And this is here from local system, which Azure doesn't have to application pool identity. All right. Now I'm changing the server configuration to make it more compatible with Azure. And now it would be a good time to actually try things out, test your application thoroughly so that you are sure that this change doesn't affect the way that the application runs. As you can see, now we have success, all right? So everything that was tested is actually compatible with Azure. So that's cool. Here you can also go and find a partner if you need it. So that's good, but what we want to do now is keep track of this assessment and we are going to save it into Azure Migrate. So I'm going to log into Azure using here this code which was set up by the tool. Like this basically it's going to link uh, Microsoft Azure to the tool. And of course we have the small, uh, you know, authentication dance like I call it. Now we are authenticated and uh, as you can see after a quick wait, we are going to be able to say, all right, I want to select the Azure Migrate project in which I want to save this assessment report. This is the one that we just created and then we upload everything now at this point this is where we will stop the demo because the next step would be to do the actual migration we are not quite there yet this is a topic of uh, the next module which is uh, coming after that but here what we can do is go back to the azure portal all right let's go to azure migrate and here if i refresh now we will see the uh, migration assessment has been uploaded. We have discovered one web server, we have assessed it, and then we have recommendations also for the next step. So everything is kept and everything is uh, easy for you to consult in the cloud. All right, so now we have assessed the web application migration. Let's go to the next demo. And in this demo, we are going to assess the SQL Server. So here, this is a SQL Server which is running on-premise. All right, this is SQL Server Management Studio with a local database. And this is here the server view. So you see that it is running here um, in a, a VM which is really on-premise. And what we are going to do now is do the assessment of this. And in order to assess that, we are going to do the same thing as before using Azure Migrate. But first of all, let's take a quick look at the database. It's a very small database, but everything runs the same. If you have a big database as well, it's just going to take longer. As you can see, small database. So that allows us, again, right, this is a non-critical workload. It allows us to really try things out with a lot of peace of mind and uh, make sure that when we migrate, the actual the critical workload that we don't have a problem so let's go to the database section all right as you can see the project is already selected this is good we can keep it and now we want to add an assessment tool and as you can see we have uh, different choices now we are going to migrate a sql server which is relatively recent so we can take here the free tool the uh, azure migrate database assessment tool 
let's go and add these two in Azure Migrate. But we also have choice for you. And so if you prefer a third party that you already know how to use, for example, you're absolutely free to do that. All right, so now we have created that. This is cool. We can go and see what uh, Azure Migrate is offering us. And again, we have those two phases, the assessment first and the migration second. We can download the data migration assistant and the data migration assistant can run anywhere and then connect to your database. Here, I'm just going to put it on the same machine, on the same virtual machine. It's quite easy this way to find uh, the database, of course. The data migration assistant is an, an application, a desktop application, just like the, the app service migration assistant that we saw before. And notice that it can also, in theory, be used for migration itself, not just for the assessment. We don't really recommend using that tool for the migration because it's only for small workloads. So if you have a bigger workload, if you want to migrate in a managed manner, then the database migration service, which is the one we are going to use in module three, is actually more appropriate. So we do the assessment. We are going to give it here a project name, all right? We just call it uh, Rewards Migrate Data, for example. We are going to uh, assess the database engine. The source is a SQL server. You can also assess something which is running in AWS if you want to migrate that to Azure. And then we have different targets. We have Azure SQL database single instance, but we also have SQL server on Azure virtual machine if you want that, uh, or SQL server on premise if you want to do a migration from a SQL server to another SQL server. We also have Azure SQL database manage instance. And here, um, I will talk more about that in module three. It's like running SQL Server in the cloud if you want. It has uh, added compatibility even with very old version of SQL Server. It also has uh, only private IP, so it is really uh, an enterprise solution. It's also more expensive. So I'm going to start by assessing uh, the, you know, the single instance, which is really the, the most cost-effective solution that we have. And I'm going to test database compatibility, but also feature parity. Let's start the assessment. I need to connect, of course, to my uh, source SQL Server. We are going to use SQL Server authentication with username and password. And of course, the tool needs to have access to the database. Now it finds out that it has one database, which I'm going to access. All right. And then we can actually start the assessment. It's going to go quite fast. And we are going to see that here in that case, we actually have some compatibility issues or rather some feature parity issues, I should say. For example, Service Broker is not supported in Azure SQL Database as well as the encryption key management. And here, this is a step where you have to ask yourself, do I need those features in Azure SQL Database? If you need them absolutely for your application to run, then maybe you need to upgrade to an Azure SQL Database Manage Instance. But the good thing is that you know in advance, all right? Now, at this point, I decide that I don't need those features for my application to run. Okay, so I can go to an Azure SQL database single instance. I don't have compatibility issues. And so now I can go and again, we are going to upload the assessment report to Azure Migrate. So again, I need to do the authentication dance directly in the tool. All right, I'm going to sign in with my password. My password happens to be bullet, 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 like I, I guess everybody else. That's great. Let's go and sign in. And because I have multi-factor authentication on Azure, which is really a kind of a basic thing to do to have added security, then you see that I'm using my phone to uh, connect. And then eventually the report will be updated. So we are going to select the subscription where you want to update that. And then in this subscription, if you remember from before, I have two Azure Migrate project, so let's take it. All right, Rewards Migrate. The assessment has been uploaded, so now I have everything in one location. I can go back to the Azure portal, and if I refresh, you will see that we have uh, the assessment has been saved properly, and we have everything we need. So the next step will be to do the actual migration. But before we do that, that will be in the next module, before we do that, I really would like to talk to you about your .NET version because we saw that it is an old version of .NET. It's a web forms application running ASP.NET 3.5. 
maybe it's time to think about, well, you know, do I want to modernize that a little bit? And of course, where we are investing a lot of effort and a lot of uh, also rewards at the moment is .NET Core. Rewards because we have incredible performance with .NET Core. Also because it's running on Windows and on Linux. So let's compare those two. And we are going to compare .NET Classic, which is, uh, you know, .NET 3.5 is considered very classic. In fact, it's pretty old. But even things like ASP .NET 4.7, 4.8, this is a classic version of .NET, all right? As well as, of course, ASP.NET 3.5. Now, on .NET Core, uh, we actually support on Azure ASP.NET Core 2.1 and 3.1, so the latest versions always. On the classic side, we do support 4.7 and 4.8, but we also support 3.5 because, again, this was a very, very popular version of .NET, and we know that there are a lot of workloads out there which run that, so we, we decide to still support that. Major difference, .NET Classic runs on Windows only. And we all know that Windows servers, you know, they have great advantages, they have great um, uh, benefits and features, but they do cost a little bit more. And so this is why some people prefer really to run things on Linux. Or maybe, you know, that most of the web these days runs on Linux servers, and we do support Linux servers on Azure. So why not take advantage of them for your .NET application by using .NET Core? That would be a great move into a great performance, but also, uh, you know, cost optimization. So I would say .NET Classic, if you have an existing application and you don't have the, the bandwidth and the personal to actually uh, migrate it to .NET Core, then it's fine. You, we have you covered. You can still migrate it and run it. But if you are running a new application or if you want to migrate your existing application and get uh, basically added value, then uh, I would recommend considering a migration on .NET Core. If you start a new application from scratch, there is no question you should train your staff and then allow them to use .NET Core instead because this is really where the innovation lies at the moment. Performance enhancements, I already mentioned that, but really .NET Core is very fast. It's way faster than, for example, Node.js, okay? So think about it. The migration path for a .NET to .NET Core migration would be just like with everything else, like uh, everything else, assessing the migration. And here we have a tool, it's called the .NET Portability Analyzer. I will show you a demo in a few seconds. One thing that you can do to get ready, that's always a good, uh, a good step, is to take your business logic and put it in .NET standard libraries, okay? So like this, you have class libraries which are compatible with .NET Classic, but also compatible with .NET Core. And like this, you can run your unit test on your business logic, and you can make sure that porting it to .NET standard has not affected the way that it runs. So it's a good place to have basically just a thin shell of ASP.NET Classic, the UI shell, maybe a few things that you really cannot port yet because you don't have the time to do it, but really most of your business logic can probably run in .NET standard already. So it's a good step. And finally, you know, sit down, relax, and enjoy the performance improvements that .NET Core is bringing you. So let's see a demo and how you can use a .NET Portability Analyzer to assess your .NET to .NET Core migration. So we will go in Visual Studio, all right? This is the application that we saw before. It's this .NET Framework 3.5 application. It's a web forms application. Pretty old, but of course it has served us very well, you know. Uh, I guess .NET 3.5 is uh, really years and years old, right? Um, but you know, it has over the years served us well, so we want to really take care of it. So the .NET Portability Analyzer is an extension. And here you see that I already installed it. If you don't have it yet, you can go into the online section here, and then you just have Portability Analyzer, it's going to find it. Once you have installed it, it shows up as a new menu. I'm going to go into my binary uh, source for uh, this website, and then I'm going to select the DLL that I want to assess. The assessment is saved as an Excel file, and then you can go and open the Excel file. It's going to basically run through all the APIs that you are using, all the .NET APIs, and it's going to tell you which ones are okay to get migrated and which ones are not supported. So let's go and open the Excel file. Here we go. You see that I have a fair score. If I wanted to go to .NET Core, I have something like between 65 and 72 percent compatibility, depending on what version I choose. All right. So this is not bad, but let's see and get better, and especially let's see what is not supported. 
So here you see the detail and really for every single .NET class that you are using, we have an assessment. And uh, for example, here we see that uh, this uh, particular class is supported on .NET standard versions 1.6 and higher. So this is great because it means that we can probably move our web forms application to .NET 4.7. And then after that, we can move uh, this particular usage of this class to a .NET standard assembly. And like this, we take a good step towards .NET Core. Now, unsurprisingly, some things are not supported. For example, the web forms UI, all right, system.web.ui.web controls. Well, okay, we don't have that in .NET Core. So this is something that you're going to work on and possibly isolate it first and then after that change it to something else. So the process, if we recap, we are going to take a monolithic ASP.NET Web Forms app. We are going to move the classes, the business classes to a .NET standard class library. And then we are going to stay with a thin layer of ASP.NET Web Forms. But this thin layer is going to be uh, easy to migrate to 4.7. Like this, you have the latest. And then later, you can replace the thin layer with something else, which is .NET Core compatible. For example, Razor Pages. All right, we also have classes which are not supported right now, things like HTTP requests in system.web, for example, .NET Core web, for example, .NET Core, we use something like HTTP client to do these kind of things. It's more efficient, it's faster, it's really recommended. So by doing this assessment, you're going to learn a lot about your application and you're also going to see how you can make it even better for your users. So hopefully this demo and the other demos that I made were helpful. So let's review quickly what we saw in this module. First of all, we have actually prepared for the migration and we have seen how you can take care of your staff, take care of your users, collect feedback, document everything, train them, all right? Basically, get ready for the phase because things are going to change when you go to Azure and you want to be prepared. We talked about Azure Migrate, all right? This is our hub for migration. This is where you can migrate, uh, you know, virtual uh, machines to a server. You can migrate a virtual desktop. You can migrate data, web application, and even data box, a physical way to migrate applications to the, to the, uh, to the cloud. We have migrated the web application using the App Service Migration Assistant. All right, this is a tool that we have, which is going to help you to migrate in a managed way. But right now we have just done the assessment so that we know that the migration is possible. We saw that we had a small error, we fixed it. We checked if the application is still running fine with uh, the uh, application pool identity being changed. And now we, are, we know that our application is ready to run in Azure. We did the assessment for the database, and here we use a data migration assistant, which is another tool. If you have other database system, we have different tools, but again, Azure Migrate is going to help you to select the correct tool. We have uploaded all the reports to Azure Migrate so that we have one uh, neat, single place, unique place where you can find out everything for traceability. This is very important. And then we took a small detour into .NET, and we talked about .NET 2, .NET Core assessment. We use a .NET Portability Analyzer, and I talked to you a little bit about architecture and how you can basically move your application to something a little bit more flexible so that later, if you want, you can uh, move it to ASP.NET Core and then take advantage of all the performance enhancement and everything that we do around .NET Core at the time, including running your application on Linux. So call to action to you. You know, it's a good time to continue learning. It's actually always a good time to keep learning. And here, if you go to aka.ms slash mod 10, you will see tutorials, samples, you will see uh, links to the Azure Migration Center, which is, uh, you know, the, the, the Azure Migrate that I had mentioned a, a few times. You will also find links to Microsoft Learn modules, which are good to continue learning on your own. We also have in the Learn module some uh, demos. You can do uh, migrations in a sandbox so that you don't have to pay anything. You can really train your staff and get ready for the migration.